Hi guys! My name's Ken from Cacao Culture and welcome to episode 2 of Planting Chocolate Tree. In today's episode, I would like to explain or at least share with you uh, what we have uh, learned uh, through this journey and para sa mga hindi pa po nakakakita ito po ang cacao the first time ko nakita na to is in 2016 I have never seen a cacao pod before it was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen except for my wife kasi siya talaga yung pinakamata Pero if you have seen this and if you have seen a tree that's full of uh, cacao pods, uh, you could just imagine, no? uh, it's very colorful. It has ridges and it's quite uh, rough and smooth. And it nag-iiba iba po siyang color pag iba ibang variety. The scientific name po ng cacao ay Tio Broma Cacao. Tios means God and Broma means food. And pag pinagsama sila ay ito po ay food for the gods. And ito pong cacao ay galing po sa Mesoamerica. So ito po <laughs> yung gitnang part ng north between North and South America. So yung gitna po yung nagko-connect sa kanila. And uh, the Aztecs uh, used uh, actually used cacao uh, to make drinks out of it during their rituals. Uh, the beans of the cacao was actually also used as currency and as a reward for uh, mga warriors nila in battle. So the cacao tree actually grows uh, in the region of our planet sa the equator belt. It's 10 to 20 degrees above and below the equator. Nandiyan po yung mga countries like the Philippines, uh, parts of India, uh, South America, Africa, and then yung mga iba nating Asian countries. Doon po pwede mag, mag grow and mag thrive ang cacao. Alam nyo po ba na ang cacao ay hindi po native sa Philippines? Uh, it was brought to the country through Manila Galleon trade during the Spanish time, no? Nung colonization nila sa atin, they created this galleon trade to trade the uh, products, spices from Manila and Mexico. No? One of the things that they brought into the Philippines is the cacao plant. And they just wanted to try, siguro kung tutubo dito, kasi tumutubo dun, so, nakita nila na it proliferated here. So, it was one of the parang foreign plants that they brought into the Philippines. And from there, nag-springboard na po ang cacao into other Asian countries. So, dito po yung unang landing spot ng cacao. And ito po ay nangyari it's around 1670. During the 1950s, Doon po na-develop yung, uh, yung industry, no? So, it's a plantation-style cacao farming. Siguro we reached, kumbaga, the peak production of 35,000 metric tons for the Philippines during the 1990. Kaso lang hindi po natin ito napagpatuloy or uh, na-push pa because of a lot of different factors, no? Some say it's uh, because of aging trees. Maybe some pests or farm issues na hindi po natin na-address no time na yon. And also, mua ba po yung world prices for the cacao beans during that time as well. So, nag-decline po yung industry and napalitan po tayo ng iba-iba pong crops. So, nagpalit po yung farmers like bananas and other plantation crops. So, fast forward po today, we haven't reached the 35,000 metric tons na peak natin nung time nung 1990s and I think the estimates uh, so far has been just around 10 to 12 metric tons and then sa production po sa buong Pilipinas 80 to 90 percent of the cacao production is concentrated in the Davao region so ito po yung mga 
provinces like uh, Davao del Norte, Davao del Sur, uh, Davao Oriental, and then Compostela Valley, which will soon be called uh, Davao de Oro and Davao City. And then between those five uh, provinces, uh, they share mga more than 20,000 hectares of cacao. And that's why majority of the cacao that you probably seen or tasted uh, would come from this region. So guys, ngayon we want to have someone try the actual fruit of uh, cacao. And we have Cassie Umali. Uh, she is a fitness vlogger and one of the very first uh, collaborations that we did is with her. So we showed her around here in Davao City and gave her a taste of uh, the actual uh, cacao fruit. So this one is what you would normally see in a cacao tree. So it's called a cacao pod. Alright? And then when you open it, uh, you would see people slice it like this way, likewise. likewise and like horizontally. I think it doesn't really matter. It depends on how the farmer is normally doing it. Okay. Uh, but Just as they, long as you get the fruit out. The, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the fruit out and then once you open it, you could actually twist it. And this one. It's the first time I'm gonna try the actual yeah. cacao fruit. You can eat the pulp. It kind of looks like santol. Yes. Right? And each variety has a different sweetness level or um, mm. mix level. Parang santol nga. Maasin. Maasin ng pote. So, do you have like nutritional benefits to like the, the fruit, the pulp of the fruit itself? It does help during the fermentation process. So during fermentation, we collect all the wet beans. And also, we would collect all of that, put it in a fermentation box. Ferment it for like four to uh, five days, depending on the situation. Okay. And then have it dried again for five days, six days. You know what? It has a hint of like, it tastes like atis. Mm. But you don't get much fruit or pulp. It's really you just like suck on it to get the flavor. Yeah. I like it. It's fruity. It's fruity. And most people wouldn't have ever thought no. that cacao came from like a fruit or chocolate. Chocolate came, came from, from fruit. fruit. So if you are vegan like yourself, chocolate is vegan. I think more interesting that the fruit also have different hints or tastes depending on location, variety. So we might have develop that. So here's a closer look of what uh, is inside the cacao pod. So ito po ang tinatawag nilang wet beans. No? So it's the actual uh, contents of the pod. And then after fermenting and drying the beans, ito na po yung kinalabasan. So these are uh, fermented and dried beans that we will soon roast. No? Uh, we will tackle that in a different episode, but you will see how we will roast these beans and then produce uh, tableya out of it. Thank you, Cassie, for dropping by and visiting us here at Cacao Culture. If you guys want to learn more about health and fitness, please check out Cassie's uh, accounts in YouTube and in Instagram. So this ends our episode 2. We hope that you've learned something. Uh, if you want to find out more about cacao and chocolates, please subscribe to this channel for our future episodes. Shoutouts and pabate. Take one. <laughs> okay. Sa mga papat sign Okay, game. Hi to Mie and Matthias of Theo and Brom. They are from Belgium. Uh, they have successfully funded their Kickstarter campaign in bringing to North America uh, their Belgian tableya. We would like to say hi to my sister Aisa Reyesla who is now uh, currently in Boston. Na nanonood din ng vlog and we miss you and uh, alam kong pa-uwi ka na this March. Hi! <laughs>
Thank you for being our uh, correspondent in the last uh, chocolate festival in Boston. No, and uh, we will see you when you get here.